Welcome to the Road to Jesus with Pastor Fred here at St. James Lutheran Church in Marion, Indiana. Today we are covering uh, Proverbs chapter 10 through Proverbs chapter 29. And um, just some background, Proverbs 10 through 22 are the Proverbs of Solomon. And they're full of like 375 unrelated sayings of wisdom. Um, some of these Proverbs are full of things that are not related to one another. And some of them, well you'll find certain things grouped together that are emphasized over other things. So, in other words, there are a lot of pithy sayings that sometimes don't have anything to do with one another, um, but are very, very, very wise. And they do follow some, some, somewhat of a pattern if you really look at them closely. Now, Proverbs 25 through 29 are from King Hezekiah and his people. These are full of what is called court wisdom. When you read these um, Proverbs, uh, sometimes... It doesn't seem like they're organized at all. And then in other parts, they're very organized. One thing they do, though, is repeat the same wisdom over and over and over again in multiple Proverbs. So if you don't get or understand one proverb, well, you know, you can always find it um, in another, which is, which is pretty um, convenient when you get down to it. So let's look at some of these Proverbs. Proverbs 10 is a proverb that con condemns the foolish and the lazy. It says, says such things as, the babbling fool will come to ruin. Hatred stirs up strife, but love covers all offenses. Like vinegar to the teeth and smoke to the eyes, so is the sluggard to those who send him. Pretty good practical teachings here. Um, overall, material blessings should be pursued honestly, and God blesses our labor. labor. Proverbs 11. This is a proverb that strongly contrasts righteousness <clears throat> and evil and the consequences of both. It says, says things like, When it all goes well with the righteous, the city rejoices, and when the wicked perish, there are shouts of joy. Be assured the evil person will not go unpunished, but the offspring of the righteous will be delivered. In other words, we should live in God's righteousness. Again, good advice. Proverbs 12 contains that contrast between evil and righteousness and talks about words and their effects. For instance, the words of the wicked lie in wait for blood, but the mouth of the righteous delivers them. The vexation of the fool is known all at once, but the prudent ignores an insult. Basically, in Proverbs 12 through Proverbs 16, the characteristics of the foolish and the wise are contrasted. The foolish believe everything that they're told. They're reckless, they're careless, they're quick-tempered. Wise people, though, think through things and are prudent and cautious. Proverbs 13 talks about living in wisdom, for instance. Uh, and it says things like, wealth gained hastily will dwindle, but whoever gains little by little will increase it. Whoever walks with the wise will become wise, but the companion of the fool will suffer harm. And I think we kind of have watched that happen a lot with people, or maybe even ourselves at times. Proverbs 14, where there is no oxen, the manger is clean, but the abundance of crops comes by the strength of the oxen. Kind of a contrast there, or a paradox. So this proverb is in the vein of, I'm thankful for dirty dishes because that means I have plenty to eat. Proverbs 15, better is a little with fear of the Lord than great treasure and trouble with it. So placing um, God and Christ at the center of our lives. Proverbs 16, this talks about the plans of God and the plans of man. The heart of man plans his way, but the Lord establishes his step. This proverb is addressed to those who are in authority and calls them to be righteous toward those who they rule. And they are to be concerned about the people, people's welfare and be agents of wrath against evil. In other words, good government. Proverbs 17, the one, this one talks about foolishness and strife. For instance, it is better to meet a she-bear robbed of her cubs than a fool in his folly. Um, that's pretty strong contrast because we all know that she-bears are very defensive of their cubs and a good way to get yourself killed, but better to run into that than a fool in his folly. It also deals with fourth commandment issues of children honoring their parents and for parents to cherish their children. This is a big theme throughout Proverbs because the basis of all stability is the nuclear family. We also are to avoid calling good evil and evil good. Proverbs 18 talks about quarreling and its effects. The one who states his case first seems right until the other comes and examines him. Um, we've all seen that. It seems like a good argument until someone makes a counter-argument and 
we have to make um, good decisions. There is a lot of uh, also Eighth Commandment stuff in Proverbs 18 and 19. It warns against false testimony against our neighbor, and we must call the gossiper to repent. Proverbs 19, whoever keeps the commandment keeps his life. He who despises his ways will die. Proverbs 19 through 20 talk about how children are born fools. They are born sinful, so we baptize them, nurture them, and teach them God's word. Proverbs 20, this proverb makes a big deal about unequal weights and the folly of cheating others. It says unequal weights and unequal measures are an abomination to the Lord. So you may not think anybody's watching, but God is watching. Proverbs 21, this proverb has a lot to say about good and evil and also about quarrelsome wives. It says, it is better to live in the corner of a housetop than in a house shared with a quarrelsome wife. Proverbs 21 through 22 talk a lot about folly and that it's more than just stupidity, but it is an act of rebellion against God. It brings bad consequences in this life and then damnation. Wisdom comes from trusting God's word. Proverbs 22, the best advice in this one, especially in our political climate, is make no friendship with a man given to anger, nor go with a wrathful man, lest you learn his ways and entangle yourself <clears throat> in a snare. Proverbs 22 through 24 talk about a lot about piety and how it is more than just avoiding evil, but also trusting in God. Proverbs 23, this one deals with wealth and cautious, cautions about hanging out with wealthy people who will use, use their money to control you. Again, good for our current political situation. Proverbs 24, again, more good advice, also a call to help others. Rescue those who are being taken away to death. Hold back those who are stumbling to the slaughter. We are called to judge, but be just in doing so. We are to speak the truth and love to our neighbor. Proverbs 25, good advice on how to conduct yourself in court and before a ruler. If your enemy is hungry, give him bread to eat. And if he is thirsty, give him water to drink. For you will be heaping burning coals on his head, and the Lord will reward you. So, righteous people, in other words, will not compromise their principles. Instead, we trust in God's mercy and in Jesus' righteousness. Proverbs 26, Avoid fools is the best advice. In other words, it says here, whoever sends a message by a fool cuts off his own feet and drinks violence. Like lame legs which hang useless is a proverb in the mouth of a fool. Now Proverbs 26 through 29 talk about how Israel is not holy or set apart because of their own greatness, but because of God's great kindness in calling them to be his people. We are the people, they are the people that the Messiah comes from. True righteousness, though, comes through faith in Jesus Christ. In fact, Christ's righteousness is a substitute for our wickedness. Proverbs 27, some good advice. Better is open rebuke than hidden love. Faithful are the wounds of a friend. Refuse the kisses of an enemy. Proverbs 28, another, some more good advice on the effects of our actions. If one turns his ear away from hearing the law, even his prayer is an abomination. Proverbs 29, when there is no prophetic vision, the people cast off restraint, but blessed is he who keeps the law. This proverb contains advice about controlling anger and speech. Now next week, we will be covering a number of things. We'll be covering Proverbs 30 through 31, and then the entire book of Ecclesiastes, and the entire book of the Song of Psalms, and then we'll start in the book of Isaiah and go to Isaiah chapter 8. So, Quite a lot contained in there next week, but some interesting writings. Ecclesiastes, I think you'll find a lot of fun to read, and well, Song of Songs, I'm not quite sure how to explain that one, but we will um, next week. So, um, God's blessings. Thank you for joining us for The Road to Jesus with Pastor Fred here at St. James Lutheran Church in Marion, Indiana. We'll see you next week. Peace out.